Hi there, this is Derivatives 8, and what I'm going to talk about is inverse trig functions. This will seem a little intimidating. I suggest you write it down. First one, and I'm just going to like write this down, and I suggest that you memorize some of these, but uh, not only that, I suggest that you write them down so that you don't have to memorize them all. But anyway, let's get off to a start, d over dx of sine to the negative 1 of x. That will equal 1 over 1 minus x squared, square root of. Okay, well, let's. Uh, th that was easy enough, right? Well, let's <laughs> try the d over dx of cosine negative 1 of x and this one is very similar just has a negative in front right 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared that one's negative though well d over dx of let's say tangent and negative 1. Well, that one will equal something that you probably will get a lot on your tests. 1 over 1 plus x squared. You'll notice, you'll see this form a lot on some of your tests, and you'll be expected to know this form and know that it goes with tan negative 1. It's just a sim it, it, it's ridiculous that teachers expect you to memorize it, but it's an important one for some reason, just to the the math gurus of the world. So d over dx of cosecant negative one x. This one just equals negative one all over x to the square root of x squared minus one d over dx secant negative 1 over x equals 1 all over x times x squared minus 1. Looks similar, huh? Starting to notice a pattern between uh, sines and cosine based uh, trig functions? Alright, well d over dx of cotangent negative 1 x that one equals negative 1 over 1 plus x squared notice the similarities here as well so I know what you're thinking uh, there's no way that uh, I, uh, that you're gonna m memorize that right and I agree no way I'm going to memorize this. And let me just tell you, I, I absolutely agree. Write it down. Always write it down. When I used to have to take these tests over and over again, the, the biggest help I could have was I would write it down right before the test. And it would allow me to, um, almost like muscle memory, muscle memory it into my brain. <laughs> so, uh, you know, anything that works for you, if you have to just notice the patterns between the cosines and the, and the sine functions, or the tangents, notice how they're similar just by a negative, do whatever you gotta do to memorize them. But, uh, one thing to remember is that y there are um, techniques that you can use that will allow you to avoid using inverse uh, trig functions and I would suggest that you go back to your trigonometry and just play around with trig identities and see if you can avoid using uh, negative tri uh, inverse trig functions so that's just one thing to remember and Remember, we just touched on the chain rule, and I just wanted to give you an example. D over dx, um, you can have 
you can still have a function within a function, just like before. So notice that, that, that this one would be the chain rule due to the 2x, right? And then also inverse function, which I'll just put if for here. If, and uh, you just need to realize that no, what all these x's up here, all the x's that you see um, in the upper part of this page, you just replace them by what was inside the parentheses. So not too complex, but remember you still have to multiply the whole function by the derivative of it. So let me just walk you through this. Sine, sine negative 1 of 2x, well, we just look up above. Uh, y prime is going to equal 1 over the square root of 1 minus, now it says x squared, right? We're going to put 2x squared. We're just replacing the x with 2x. That's all we did. Now, then we multiply the whole function by the derivative of 2x, which is 2. Super simple. So, don't get intimidated by this. Um, just, I would suggest writing these down and doing uh, lots of examples. And I'll see you guys in the next uh, video for some really just drawn out examples. So. I'll see you in the next video.